meditations on the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Let us imagine that we are in Gethsemane with Jesus while he prays and suffers in his loneliness. The disciples fell fast asleep while Jesus prayed, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus was sweating, suffering more than anyone can imagine. As we begin this journey with Jesus, let us learn to be meek in the most difficult situations of life. We pray these meditations now, asking God to open our hearts and help us to change, to lead our lives according to God's will. May we be one with Jesus and carry with a smile the burdens of our daily life. Let us pray that we understand more the meaning of staying with Jesus, of sharing his loneliness and suffering, of being a follower, imitating what Jesus did for us. Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus stands alone before Pilate, scourged, crowned with thorns, and told how he would die. We may not have the blessing to know the place, the time, or the circumstances of our death. We know we are destined to die the moment we are conceived. This is part of being human. Because we live fully with Christ in eternity, we need not worry about money, clothes, or any material goods. These things don't make us precious. These things won't help us when our time to die comes. We need to hand ourselves over to Jesus, knowing that God knows best what is best for us. Let us pray that we discover a deep peace and have an acceptance of difficult situations of life. Jesus carries his cross. May we carry all our crosses that you give us patiently and lovingly. Jesus' feet were unsteady. The soldiers were pushing because they had a job to get done. Jesus' pain seemed unbearable, yet he asked not to be pitied. By accepting our daily crosses, we share in the suffering of Jesus. Crosses 
have been thrust on each one of us. Each cross is not the cross that we chose, but the cross that God chooses for us. This cross is not made to punish us, but to refine us. We pray that we may learn the wisdom of triumphing through our crosses rather than in spite of them. May we carry all our crosses that you give us patiently and lovingly. Bruised and beaten, Jesus falls under the weight of the cross. We know that we will fall if we try too hard to succeed all by ourselves. At times we get so wrapped up in our own efforts to run our own lives our way that we forget to let God, our Father, guide us in our lives. We forget to let God work through us at times, we call attention to ourselves. At times, we fail to realize that soldiers pushed Jesus, kicked him, yelled at him to keep going, to keep trying. May we who fall from weaknesses find the strength to get up to keep going whenever we fail. Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. Imagine what the Blessed Mother says and feels when she sees the beaten, weak body of her son. Though Mary wants to run away from this, for her heart was pierced with a lance, she was fully present to Jesus and became the model of all Christians. Mary, our mother, sees our pain and is a firming companion for all who suffer. Let us pray that we accept the grace to cope not only with our own pain and crosses, but to open our hearts to see the pain of others.
Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. Jesus' strength is gone. He can no longer bear the cross alone. Jesus is encouraged by the helping hand of Simon of Cyrene, another human being. Each time we lift some burden from another's back, you lift with your own hand the cross weight of Jesus that crushes his shoulders. Help us, Lord, to more than just sit and watch. Help us to be a doer. Lord Jesus, make us ready and willing to help one another, our neighbor. Let us be the heart of those who cannot find love and care in our world. Help us to realize that much in life is not just, not fair. We are startled by crosses thrust upon us when we least expect them. We may even ask, why me? We must not spend our life looking for reasons for our crosses. We will never know the answer until we die. God used Simon so that Jesus could do the will of his Father. We, like Simon, must be willing to help others to carry the cross of Jesus when it is given to us as he had asked. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Veronica steps forward, seeing Jesus in distress. Jesus' face is bathed in sweat and blood. Veronica presents her veil and wipes the face of Jesus, and left upon it the cloth, the image of Jesus' sacred countenance. Lord, Help us to regard every opportunity for kindness as an act that will last for eternity. Veronica, spend a lifetime learning to be gentle. Help us to be gentle, especially when we are upset. Help us to practice gentleness until it comes naturally. Help us to see your bloodied face, the intensity of your love for us. Jesus falls the second time. Jesus finds it very hard to get up after he had fallen the second time. The crowds of people pushed, pulled, to make Jesus get up and keep going. There are so many things that we try to do, but at times we fall. We don't understand why. Help us now to realize that in times of difficulty, we must be cheerful. Give us the strength to get up, as Jesus did. We know that you care for us, and the feeling comes through as we see you again under the weight of your cross.
Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. Jesus stops for a moment and offers the women comfort in their sorrow. Jesus did not want them to feel sorry for him, so he told them to pray for themselves. Even though we ourselves have been hurt, as we try to make a relative, neighbor, or friend feel better. Jesus himself was hurt, yet had enough strength and feeling not to stop, but to speak kindly to them. Let us pray to the Lord Jesus to pay more attention to the needs of others and to think less of ourselves and our own needs. Jesus falls a third time. We know that in loving fidelity to his Father's will and out of compassion for each one of us, Jesus accepts the heavy burden of his cross. In doing so, Jesus encourages us to do the same. No matter what form it takes, we know that our cross, if carried in the spirit of Jesus, will work for our salvation. We know how hard it is to get up some mornings, to face the challenges that await us. We may ask ourselves, what good am I to anyone? If we accept our weaknesses with love, we are doing wonders for ourselves as well as the whole of creation. When we show love, when we are weak and helpless, we are making ourselves like Jesus. Let us join now with Jesus in carrying our cross, whether it is sickness, discouragement, or loneliness. Let us not become upset with our human frailty, but pray that our heart be filled with strength so that whenever we feel like falling, we realize that God wants us to go forward in his path of love. Jesus is stripped of his garments.
The soldiers rip off the cloak that they threw on Jesus after he was beaten at Pilate's palace. No. No. Some people make jokes and laugh at Jesus. Some even spit on Jesus. Jesus is stripped of every shred of human dignity. We stand naked before our heavenly God and loving Father and Creator. Without God's help, we are nothing. Let us live now secure in the love and the dignity that God has given to each one of us. Let us empty ourselves of selfishness and sin, and not even flinch when our self-esteem is taken away from us. Let us pray that God will release us from the vice of pride. Let us long to emulate Jesus even as we are led to the lowest level. May we be poor in spirit so that the Spirit of Jesus can be rich in us. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus' executioners stretched his arms. With a heavy hammer blow, they drive it through, and the pain bursts like a bomb of fire in Jesus' brain. They raise Jesus' knees so that his feet were flat against the wood. They hammer them fast. The pain of those nails almost makes Jesus black out. Jesus did not ask, why is this happening to me? Or, must it happen? Is it fair? No one sustained more suffering than Jesus. Let us pray that God will help us here and now to accept whatever sicknesses, torments, or agony that may come our way. Help us to realize that through our daily crosses, we complete the suffering of Jesus on this earth. Jesus dies on the cross. As Jesus hangs dying on the cross, thousands see their efforts and dreams collapse. Jesus is even tempted to doubt God's presence in his struggles. But in the end, Jesus dies the way he had lived, with total trust in his Father's love.
Because Jesus dies and rises, the world is now redeemed. Jesus has broken the hold of sin and death over us. Let us offer Jesus our death with its pains, accepting now the time and the kind of death God has in store for us. Let us pray that at the time of our death, we will be at peace with Jesus. May our hearts never be troubled or afraid. Teach us to open our hearts to you and feel the warmth of your love. Jesus is taken down from the cross. The noise has stopped on Mount Calvary. The noise, hustle, and bustle of Jerusalem can be heard in the distance. The shops and the businesses have begun to reopen. The mother Jesus cradles the lifeless body of her son in her arms. Mary's eyes are fixed with tears as she looks at the sight of her son's abused body. Let us beg the Lord to help us to accept the parting that must come from friends, family who go away. children who have moved and are far from us, from the dear ones whom God has called to himself. We need to repeat again the words of the prayer. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us a loving, caring, heavenly mother. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Joseph of Arimathea takes the body of Jesus and lays it in a tomb cut out of a rock. The tomb was borrowed. Jesus borrowed Peter's boat from which he preached. Jesus borrowed a donkey to ride when he came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Jesus borrowed bread and wine to make his presence flow throughout history. Jesus wants to borrow us to be his tongue and his parched throat. Jesus wants us to be his hands, his feet, marked with the suffering of the nails. Jesus wants us to be his head with the thorns of humility. Jesus wants us to be his side, pierced with a lance. Jesus wants us to be his body, stripped of selfishness. When Jesus is finishing barring us, he will call us home to be with him in our risen body.
Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is risen from the dead. He is alive. The darkness of the night has given way to the bright promise of the sun. The tomb is empty. God made man walks again the face of the earth. The suffering, the hardships, the torches of Jesus' life are now swallowed up in the glory of the resurrection. Jesus is risen as he said. From the tomb came Jesus and made his cross the throne of glory. From the tomb Jesus came back to life to fill us with certainty that we too shall share in God's glory. Our hearts are now filled with hope. Let us look now to the empty tomb when we ourselves find ourselves closed and confined. We can overcome anything that is given to us because we all will be raised up, renewed, made perfect, and to be with Jesus in eternity. Let us go, take up our cross, complete the life of Christ, proclaiming the good news that Jesus is risen. Let us now let Jesus hold us in the palm of his hands. Let us gently lead Jesus now to those looking for Jesus in glory. May the joy of the victory of the resurrection of Christ Jesus spread its peace throughout our lives and throughout the world. Mary, the caregiver, to her dying son, Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus, felt exhausted from emotional tension. Even though Jesus' body racked with pain, there was nothing Mary could do to help. Mary may have felt in her own body the sharp pain where the soldiers pierced the heart of her son with a lance. Jesus' body goes into a coma. The sponge of gall seemed like a flimsy excuse for a drink of water. All Mary could think of were the cords of pain that had wrapped tight around her son's body. Mary gave her son life, nursed him, bathed him as an infant, did his laundry, prepared his meals, and prayed with him. Now, she must let him go. Mary remembered the many funny things they did together, the things that she did as a parent, the visits they had with friends, the times she bandaged her son's cuts. And now, she must let him go. Mary is motionless, patiently at the foot of the cross while the blood streamed down and almost blinded Jesus. His eyes were open and looked at them. The 
The face of Jesus is not familiar. His gray skin is shriveled and hanging loose in spots. The eyes are sunken far into Jesus' bony skull. His body, once plump and rounded, is now a wasted skeleton, skin over sharp bones, barely alive. The skin has red and black spots, with circles from the marks of the leather whip. No morphine to kill the pain. Mary looks on to say to herself, O oh God, how long? Earlier in the day, Jesus asked his friends to stay with him and not to leave. Mary is dazed and asks, Why God? Will we ever know the answers? Thankfully, we have. Jesus begins to lose strength. God knew what he was doing when he put Mary to Jesus as a caregiver. God gave to Mary a heart of wax to melt the compassion. Mary waited almost three hours watching her loved one suffer. Mary probably said out loud, I love you. Jesus stops breathing. No painkillers to make him sleep. The heart of Mary pounded rapidly as she waited and watched. Mary cried as Jesus' body hung on the cross. Mary taught us compassion. The skies become dark. God's will be done. Mary remembered the message about total trust in the Father's will. She recalled her son's words, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. Mary said not a word of her sorrow and her fears to others. Still within herself, Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The handmaid of the Lord had done her work.